1958, a colossal cinematic creation hit the screen's attack of the 50-foot woman. This sci-fi flick, though not a blockbuster in its time, has left an indelible mark on the industry. Brace yourselves because there are some funny, shocking, and even sad facts about this film that will keep you hooked. Ever wondered how a seemingly ordinary storyline could inspire or impact someone's life? Can you recall a personal tale where this larger-than-life movie became a symbol of the industry's enduring qualities? We've got some interesting insights headed your way. Before we dive into the depths of this movie's impact, we're eager to hear your most cherished memory or personal experience related to it. Share your stories and memories in the comments below. Now, let's unravel the layers of Attack of the 50-Foot Woman. Attack of the 50-Foot Woman is a film that showcases various elements commonly found in classic movies. It features a stereotypical drunk character, a group of rural sheriffs, and a couple of less nuanced characters. The storyline revolves around a woman who undergoes a transformation, growing to a towering height ranging from 8 to 75 feet, depending on the camera angle. The film introduces a monomaniacal pursuit as the giant woman seeks her husband, communicating in brief phrases reflecting her single-minded determination. Considered a classic among large woman films, the movie combines elements of humor and suspense. Initial exposure to this film often occurred in unconventional settings, such as local TV shows that featured these peculiar productions. On the contrary, some viewers may find the movie lacking in technical execution. The film's narrative, though centered around the titular transformation, delays the giant woman's appearance until the final moments of its brief 66-minute runtime. A noticeable reliance on dialogue-driven scenes contributes to a sense of sluggish pacing, only picking up during the climactic moments reminiscent of King Kong. Technical shortcomings are apparent in the film's visual effects, where forced perspective is replaced by a combination of long-shot double exposure and, notably, a comically fake papier-mâché hand. Despite financial constraints, the film's use of such effects raises questions about missed opportunities for more convincing alternatives like adjusting camera angles. In conclusion, Attack of the 50-Foot Woman holds a unique place in cinematic history, offering both entertainment and technical challenges. Its blend of humor and suspense, though appreciated by some, may be overshadowed by its apparent missteps in execution. Nevertheless, it remains a noteworthy entry in the genre of films featuring larger-than-life transformations, leaving an impact on viewers who appreciate the quirks of vintage cinema. In the 1958 film Attack of the 50-Foot Woman, the narrative reflects the constraints of its era, evident in the characters Harry and Honey exclusively engaging in public displays of affection at Tony's bar rather than pursuing a more private setting. The movie reaches a pivotal moment around the 56-minute mark, marking the 50-foot woman's initial appearance following a brief glimpse of her colossal hand. Interestingly, Yvette Vicker's provocative dance in the film was inspired by a suggestion from Frank Chase, Deputy Charlie, and brother of dancer Barry Chase, showcasing collaborative creativity among the cast. This film, a product of its time, navigates censorship while introducing significant plot developments such as the 50-foot woman's impactful debut and the collaborative effort in choreography adding depth to the cinematic experience. Yvette Vickers gained fame through her role in the film. The following year, she attracted more attention by posing for Playboy in the July 1959 issue photographed by Russ Myers. Vickers enjoyed the experience, with her only regret being unable to reveal more than her bare buttocks. Originally, the film was intended to be titled The Astounding Giant Woman. In the mid-1980s, director Jim Wynorski contemplated remaking it, considering Sybil Danning for the lead role. The film's impact on Yvette Vickers' career and the potential remake plans in the 1980s offer intriguing insights into its lasting influence. The couples at Tony's Bar and Grill in the movie engage in the Carolina Shag Dance, providing a recurring backdrop to the narrative. This dance choice adds a distinctive touch, contributing to the film's atmosphere. Notably, the movie's ad was crafted by Roger Corman, earning a place in the Museum of Modern Art's permanent collection. Corman's design captures the essence of the film, solidifying its significance in the realm of cinematic art. Nancy Archer's car, a 1958 Chrysler Imperial convertible, and the sheriff's car, along with his station wagon, both 1958 Plymouths, play subtle yet noteworthy roles in the visual elements of the movie. 
The choice of these specific car models adds authenticity to the film's setting. The Carolina Shag Dance, Roger Corman's artistic involvement, and the meticulous choice of automobiles all play a part in shaping the distinct visual and cultural elements of the film, providing a deeper understanding of its composition. Piggybacking on the success of The Amazing Colossal Man and The Incredible Shrinking Man, the 1958 film Attack of the 50-Foot Woman strategically tapped into the popularity of similarly themed movies of its time. Ranked 8 on the 25 best movie posters ever by Premiere Magazine, the film's poster stands as a testament to its visual impact and recognition in cinematic history. Nancy's screams for Harry in the movie were repurposed in the trailer for Jack the Ripper, showcasing an interesting reuse of audio elements across films. In summary, Attack of the 50-Foot Woman strategically aligned with popular themes of its era, earned a notable position in the realm of movie posters, and even contributed audio elements to another film. In the realm of 1950s cinema, the movie known for its colossal impact, Attack of the 50-Foot Woman, harbors interesting details that add layers to its narrative. A delivery man from Acme Medical Supply makes a subtle appearance, transporting a case of Kodak raw film stock to the mansion, hinting at the film's behind-the-scenes intricacies. This discreet nod to the filmmaking process offers a glimpse into the practical aspects of production. Delving deeper, the distinct beeping sound emanating from the alien spacecraft is a familiar echo from the amazing Colossal Man, strategically reused to enhance auditory continuity across films. Such resourceful repurposing of audio elements contributes to the cohesive fabric of cinematic storytelling, connecting disparate narratives through shared auditory experiences. Notably, the film's setting aligns with the post-Sputnik era, riding the wave of the Russian space satellite's success. The alien spacecraft, referred to as a satellite within the narrative, reflects the zeitgeist of the time when any spherical-shaped spacecraft was colloquially labeled as such. This intentional choice by the writer weaves the film seamlessly into the technological and cultural context of the late 1950s. In summary, Attack of the 50-Foot Woman, born from the success of its predecessors and influenced by the space race, unveils subtle behind-the-scenes details and clever audio connections that enrich the viewing experience. In the peculiar scenes where the giant Nancy traverses the town, a repetition in her steps becomes apparent. Only the backdrop changes while her movements remain identical. Interestingly, as she walks away after seizing her wayward husband Harry, the sequence is reversed and his presence in her hand only manifests when she approaches the power lines. Considered among the worst sci-fi films, this movie paradoxically falls into the so bad it's good category, providing enjoyment despite its acknowledged shortcomings. Director Nathan Juran, embarrassed by the film's meager budget and subpar quality, insisted on being credited as Nathan Hertz, incorporating his middle name into the billing. The film's distinct visual quirks, coupled with its reception as a guilty pleasure, contribute to its unique standing in cinematic history. Nathan Duran's choice to be credited as Nathan Hertz adds a layer of intrigue to the production circumstances, emphasizing his discomfort with the film's limitations. In the annals of film history, Attack of the 50-Foot Woman, despite its flaws, manages to captivate audiences with its unintended charm and directorial quirks.